Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin and we are on our second to last episode of Inktober. I cannot believe it's almost coming to a close. I have officially drawn all the pieces, released them on Instagram, and uh, everything's been recorded and now it's just up to editing and we're gonna finish it this week. Like, holy crap, a whole month of crazy hard work and now I kind of know what like I'm capable of and what it takes to do three videos a week. It was, it was murder, but man, it was worth it to kind of learn what I was capable of and then just getting back into ink drawings again. The whole thing was just a really fun experience. So today for the second to last topic, we're gonna be getting a question from What Agree. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, how do you actually create all these characters? For example, most of the time I just draw something random and see something in it. So it's not that I have a particular idea or concept before I start drawing. Love your ink toner vibes, by the way. They are really detailed drawings. Well, thank you. Um, in terms of the question, so I answered this a little bit in the comment section of this video. I can't remember what video this is in. Um, it might have been the last one. Also, quick side note, I apologize for the dog barks or if you hear any weird dog grunting noises in the background, my dogs are in my office and I can't kick them out because they'll instead bark and scratch. But anyway, um, so yes, I answered this a little bit in the comments in this video in particular. Um, and it's kind of a multifaceted answer. So after creating so many characters and just having a really strong passion for creating characters and concept art, I've just kind of fallen into how I create characters. So first and foremost, I've talked about it before in a previous episode, it's kind of you have to build up your mental bank. So one way that I get inspired on how I draw and create my characters is kind of having a basis for a lot of different types of characters in my brain. Um, for example, this month has had a lot of kind of D&D-esque characters because I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for quite a long time now and I absolutely love the monster manuals, the player guides, like everything in there. So I know the different races, the classes, the monsters, and I draw a lot of inspiration from those. So this month we had like dark elves and orcs and elves and dwarfs and a lot of different character types and races that are kind of based off of my experience in D&D. And going with that, the characters in the player handbook and whatnot have so many different designs in terms of armor and clothing and weapons. So I've kind of built up a mental bank of that, um, along with I do a lot of research into other types of clothing and accessories and looks and weapons and whatever I can to inform my designs even more. So. A recommendation I think I've covered in a previous one is I have Pinterest boards dedicated to all sorts of types of outfits, all sorts of types of weapons. Whatever I'm going to use in character design, I pull together into a reference pack. So when I'm ready to draw or create or design a character, what helps me get in the mindset and ready to draw and design this character is looking at those boards and thinking like, okay, so, you know, what would this character wear? Where are they from? Like, what type of ethnical look do I want for them? Um, what type of character are they? And this kind of leads into my next point. What helps me a lot when I'm creating a character and thinking about what their design is gonna look like is I also think about their personality and what every single piece of like armor or whatever they have on their character, what it's gonna be good for and what they actually use it for. And making those types of informed design choices actually helps the design process go faster and become more effective. So for a rogue that I designed for my own D&D character, I'm playing as a dragonborn rogue in my current game and I've drawn and designed this rogue before what helped me design and create the look for this rogue is, okay, um, what weapon does she use? Knives? Okay, well then I want the knives to look like this. And I did a couple brainstorms and I'm like, all right, well, um, what color dragonborn is she? And I made her purple because I wanted her to be dark and mysterious and kind of blend into the black background. So she's a really deep, dark purple. 
And then from there, I kind of figured out, you know, what color palette would she go with? Uh, what type of armor does she need to be a rogue and be effective? So once you start kind of thinking about the character, their personality, their livelihood, what they do every day, how they live their life, all that, that will really inform how you create and mold your character as you go. And even to go further with that, um, I'm currently developing uh, a new series that I'm creating. And I also did this for Jade Dragon a bit. I was still a little inexperienced back then. So my newer series is, I, I guess, a better example. Um, I am thinking really in depth on how I can make this world, I guess, really believable and in depth and whatever I can do to make it more lifelike. So one of the things I'm doing is brainstorming, okay, well, you know, there's these different societies and these different people. What is their commerce? What do they grow? What do they make? What do they harvest? What, like all these different questions I ask myself and then those inform later on the character designs. Like, does this type of race have like craftsmen or merchants or are they much more militaristic? Are they um, more artistic, different, backstories like that can also inform and help you think of what the characters are going to look like. Also, uh, sorry for the spike in the background noise there for a second towards the end. Um, my dogs knocked over one of my lamps, so that was a fun way to interrupt my recording. But either way, um, let's get back to the topic. <laughs> um, so basically, you have to really think about in-depth of backstory to these characters, and that's going to help a lot with building up the reasoning behind their designs and you know how they exist and whatnot so another good point on uh thinking of these characters and giving you guys a little bit more insight into my thought process is giving yourself the freedom and the room to make multiple designs and multiple looks so i know a lot of you might be thinking that i just thought of these characters one and done in these inktobers and i just made them and they came into being Honestly, not really. Um, I always do thumbnail sketches for a lot of my drawings before I really start diving in, especially with bigger traditional pieces like this where I can't just like edit undo. Uh, I have to think of what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna draw and go from there. So usually during my thumbnailing process, I'm like, okay, well, you know, what fits this piece? What type of character, what type of race of character do I want for this? Do they have companions? All that stuff starts going into the initial thumbnailing. And I go through a lot of different sketches of like, how do I want these people to interact? And like, how or what, who, who do I even want in the scene? So I have to think of all that while thumbnailing. And during the process of thumbnailing, I typically also even add some character sketches and try to get an idea of what type of character I want. Now that I've been doing this for a while, I can also still kind of do it on the fly. For example, uh, the orc piece that I did for uh, the fat theme, she was just a very general loose idea when I did the thumbnail. When I started the thumbnail, I'm like, I know I want to do a cool big orc warrior holding a beer, but that's all I had. Like, that's all I had for the start of that one. But at least I knew it was an orc, I knew what she was doing, and I knew what type of race and class I wanted her to be. So from there, it was a lot easier for me to create the character on the fly. So while I was sketching it for the actual Inktober piece, I was thinking, all right, well, what type of armor does she have? Like, what do I want to add to accessorize this character? And having the basis of the orc warrior helped inform those designs a lot and then it also draws back to my previous points of i've looked up so much armor and a lot of things in DD &D and different designs i really liked and i kind of had a a mental picture of what could be cool and interesting but then i also gave myself the freedom to be like you know i mean she didn't have to have this or like didn't have to have this certain patterning on her armor, but let's try it. And when I sketch it, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Let's do it. Um, so it's just there's a lot of different ways to create interesting and new characters. And it's kind of just a natural flow that's different for everyone. There's some times that I can just bang out a character in one go in one sketch and I love it. But then there's other times that I sit on a character for a really long time and have to think and ponder and do a lot of sketches and concepts and take my time in building the character. 
it's not always a quick process. And from my side, looking at your guys' comments, it's not like I make these things like instantly. Um, and it's not like every single one is perfect. One thing that I always like to emphasize is I, every piece I make, I never show. Like there's a lot of sketches like I might never show or, you know, post online. Like when I do sketchbook tours, there's some in there that I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I never posted that online. Yeah, it is here on YouTube, but there's a lot of practice and art behind everything I draw. And it's not like an instant, like, bam, I got characters. Like character and creature design is my passion. And I get really excited for doing it. And I get really invested when I start thinking of characters and stories. So I already have that kind of behind me in terms of motivating me and I guess prompting me to make characters so quickly. But it doesn't always happen like in a one and done. There's been so many that I just go through multiple ideas or I sit and brainstorm forever or I have to do a bunch of research and I think that's something important that you guys need to know. Yes, it is nice to see the one character at the end when I'm doing the final Inktober, but just know that it takes time and it takes a lot of practice and effort to get to a point where you can just bang one out just in one take or just the first design you do you like. Um, and that's not always gonna be the case. Like, there's gonna be a lot that you make or points in your life where you wanna make interesting and cool characters but might be hitting some roadblocks or you just, it, it, like, it's not coming to you or anything like that. And what I'd recommend is start kind of building a library that you can reference and start looking at things that inspire you and start kind of researching and looking at other character designers and what they make. I have so many art books because I like to see the process that artists and creative directors and all that took to get to the final character. Cause you could watch a movie and be like, wow, um, let's just take Zootopia. Cause I'm looking at the book right now, man. The final characters are so cool. Like I love their design and whatever. But if you go back and look in the previous versions of those characters, they came a long way from step one and it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to develop a cool and interesting character and having those art books you can see each step in the process and kind of observe like oh they pushed this even more oh they did this even more and usually they even have write-ups to explain and let you guys know like this is how we got to the final solution or this is how we started and having that little bit of insight and information can really help you I guess grow in terms of being a concept artist or a character designer or anything like that. So if you don't have art books or if you don't have access to them, just look up different things online or I would really recommend at least picking up one or two. The Disney ones are great. There's a lot of other really great art books out there. Um, just try to get one with some words because I know the pictures are pretty, but the words help a lot in terms of learning the backstory behind the designs. So I hope this all was helpful for you guys. Um, I kind of jumped all over the place as I usually do, um, but I hope this helps you guys make some really cool and awesome characters in your future. So thanks again guys for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, you can go and hit that subscribe button. I have new videos every week and we have one more Inktober that I'm planning to come out at the end of this week. So make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you get a notification when I upload it. So thanks again guys for stopping by and I'll see you all next time. Bye everybody.